Hi, it's Tansel here. And today I'll be just going through some questions uh, in my emails, answering them to the best of my abilities. So here we go. First question is from Luca Samsonia, and he's from Georgia. So thanks for your question there, Luca. And he asks, hello, Tansel. Thank you for your work and this opportunity. My question is, what do you think about the Ebbinghaus repetition model? Will this model help memory techniques to stick knowledge forever? So thanks again uh, for your email and question, Luca. It's a good question. Now, the Ebbinghaus repetition model, or it's actually called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve, is essentially um, something that was developed by a German psychologist named Hermann Ebbinghaus uh, back in 1885. And he did uh, some studies about uh, memory. Uh, in fact, uh, in, he went and memorized certain abstract data and wanted to see how long it takes before people forgot those things. What he concluded was that soon after you remember something, it gets forgotten after a period of time. So hence, he created a curve, which is called the forgetting curve. So if you memorize something, if you learn something soon after, you tend to forget it, <laughs> right? And we, we kind of know that, but this is a research behind it. So in order to remember a lot better, um, there's a thing called space repetition where once you've memorized something, you go back after a period of time and you can start to remember those contents. So often what I say to people is if you memorize something, so whether it's you know definitions, phrases, uh, a list of something, whatever it is, and if you want to keep a long term, especially long term, what you need to do is you need to go back after you've memorized, let's say two hours later, and just review that process, review your memorization, because what you're doing is you're uh, touching into the stories and associations that you made and making it a lot stronger. And then after two hours, do it 24 hours later. So the next day, around the same time. That way, instead of forgetting, say, most of it, now that you've gone back to review it, you're strengthening that memory. What you're meant to do is you're meant to go a week later and review, two weeks later, four weeks later, and so on. What I generally do, because my memory, even though I'm the memory champion, even though I've got an advanced memory, uh, I don't go back a week later. I might, after two hours and the next day, I might go back three days later because I really want to keep that into my head if I'm remembering something. A classic example is memorizing phrases from another language. You don't want to just memorize a phrase uh, or 10 phrases every single day because come the next day, you're going to forget most of them. <laughs> and the new ones that you memorize, uh, you're going to have difficulty remembering them the next day as well. So by the end of the week, you're not going to remember many of them. So you need to have a strategy right, of memorization. That's where uh, space repetition kicks in. So in order to remember things forever, a knowledge forever, you need to create a strategy which involves space repetition as well as going back to periods of, okay, uh, where do I store this? Do I keep this in locations in my head? Do I use a memory palace? Do I mind map things? Mind mapping is a fantastic way of keeping the knowledge so that you can always go back and go directly to that branch, uh, directly to that topic without having to sift through large amount of data. So um, I'll be creating more videos on that anyway. So if you're unsure, don't worry about it. Uh, you can check out some of my mind mapping videos. I've made the very basic ones. Um, but in order to retain that knowledge forever, to keep it in long term, what you do is uh, go through several reviews over a period of time, store that information, whether it's in your memory palaces or mind maps, and really just go back and review from time to time. That's the way to go about it. Now, obviously, you have to use memory techniques, not just repetition, because repetition, uh, as you may or may not know from this channel, uh, is not the strongest way of memorizing. Right? It is a way, but it's not that strong. You want to be able to use linking and association. You want to use things like memory palaces to store that. And remember, memory palace is like folders on your computer. Right, You don't necessarily have to know where they all are. You just chuck the information in and retrieve that information at any given point in time. So that's what a memory palace is, a method of loci. Uh, whereas the memorization system, it all involves you know, visualization and connection and using emotion. In fact, Ebbinghaus uh, realized that emotion and feelings played a huge part in uh, making stronger memorization as well. So thank you uh, for your question, Luca. Hopefully that's answered your question and hopefully it's answered a lot of people watching as well, their questions, because 
Uh, this is something that is quite often asked. And you know, people want to retain things for long term as well. I mean, I used to do a lot of religious type textbooks or religious books in general, like the Quran or Bible. People want to remember law, right? statutes and cases, things like that. You want to retain for longer term. Um, you know, medical definitions, things for exams, you know, professional exams. I get a lot of people for professional exams as well. This kind of stuff will really help. Um, it's about having a strategy. Once you have that, then you can, you know, tackle everything. So hopefully that's all made sense. Uh, any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.